네, 안녕하세요. 염동훈입니다. 아침 일찍 이렇게 많은 분들이 참석해 주셔서 너무 감사합니다. 그 아마존 웹 서비스와 한국 고객 개발자 및 파트너들과 같이 하는 서울 서밋에 참석해 주신 여러분께 감사드립니다. 아, 저희가 이제 이 행사를 처음으로 한국에서 진행하다 보니까 솔직히 걱정이 좀 많았어요. 그래서 이제 그 등록을 오픈한 후 얼마나 많은 분들의 관심을 보여줄까 좀 걱정을 하고 있었는데 오히려 너무나 많은 분들이 관심을 보여줘서 저희가 놀랐습니다. 아, 그만큼 아마존 웹 서비스에 대한 관심이 많은 것에 대해서는 또한 감사드립니다. 그 키노트를 시작하기 앞서 제가 AWS가 한국에서 어떻게 성장하고 있는지 궁금하실 것 같아서 어, 이에 대해 간단하게 설명을 드리겠습니다. 그 벤처 기업이라는 것은 어떻게 보면은 하나의 아이디어를 제한된 자원을 통해서 성공시켜야 되는데 솔직히 어렵습니다 이게. 그래서 이런 어려움을 좀 극복하기 위해서 클라우드 컴퓨팅을 상당히 잘 사용하고 있습니다. 국내 스타트업들도 많이 이미 도입을 해서 성공적인 사업을 펼쳐 나가고 있습니다. 그래서 이 슬라이드에 보시면은 여러분들이 잘 알고 있는 회사 로고들이 많이 보이실 겁니다. 또한 클라우드 컴퓨팅이 제공하는 주 장점 중에 하나가 뭐 클릭 몇몇 번을 통해서 해외 진출, 글로벌 진출을 쉽게 할수 있다는 게 상당히 그큰 장점인데 그 장점을 잘 사용해서 국내 게임사들이 상당히 어, 성공적으로 AWS 통해서 글로벌에서 지금 사업을 펼쳐 나가고 있습니다. 그래서 이 슬라이드에 보시면은 여러분들이 잘 알고 있는 국내 메이저 게임사들이 지금 다그 사용을 하고 있습니다. 그 회사들 외에도 많은 스타트업 게이밍 회사들이 또 사용하고 있고요. 근데 이제 이게 스타트업들하고 게이밍사들만 클라우드 컴퓨팅을 사용할 수 있는 상황이냐? 그렇진 않습니다. 대기업들, 여기 보시면 삼성, LG, SK, 또한 금융사인 미래에셋, 또 항공사 아시아나, 이스타젯 상당히 많은 회사들이 AWS가 제공하는 클라우드 컴퓨팅을 통해서 사업을 지금 많이 이제 성공적으로 그 디지털 트랜스포메이션을 시도하고 성공적으로 그 방향으로 나가고 있습니다. 저는 이런 내용을 보면서 아, 이제는 클라우드라는 것은 이제 버즈워드가 아니라 새로운 표준이 되고 있다. 저희가 봤을 때는 이제는 많은 기업들이 기술 기업으로 변신을 하면서 기술, 기술 기업으로 성공하기 위해서는 클라우드가 필수입니다. 그래서 이제 이런 상황을 보면서 우리가 이런 고객들을 어떻게 지원을 더 잘해줘야 될까 그걸 고민을 많이 하는데요. 그래서 그걸 하기 위해서는 현지화가 상당히 중요하다고 생각합니다. 현지화를 통해서 고객들이 필요한 기술적인 니즈에 대해서 우리가 대응을 더 잘해야겠다라는 생각을 많이 하고 있습니다. 그래서 그런 걸 하기 위해서는 저희가 몇몇 팀들을 지금 강화를 하고 있어요. 보시면 은 고객 지원, 프로페셔널 서비스라고 하는 컨설팅 조직, 상당히 중요한 파트너 에코 시스템을 저희가 투자하고 있고 또 클라우드를 잘 사용하기 위해서 트레이닝과 서티피케이션 프로그램을 저희가 운영을 하고 있습니다. 그리고 마지막으로는 솔루션스 아키텍트와 어카운트 매니저들이 저희 고객사들과 상당히 밀접하게 지금 일을 하면서 그 회사들이 갖고 있는 비즈니스 니즈를 AWS 통해서 저희가 잘 도움을 드리고 있습니다. 또 현지화를 하면서 또한 가지 우리가 배우고 있는 게 있어요. 그 한글로 준비되어 있는 자료들이 더 많으면 고객사들이 직접 배워서 클라우드 컴퓨팅을 더잘 사용할 수 있겠다라는 저희 그 고객의 목소리를 자주 듣고 있습니다. 그래서 저희가 최근에 이제 준비를 한 건데요. 아, 오늘 이 행사 후에 저희가 이메일을 통해서 좀더 자세한 내용을 보내드릴 텐데 AWS에 관련된 백서, 
또 AWS를 관련된 주요 상품의 사용 설명서 그런 거를 저희가 현지화를 했습니다. 그래서 로컬라이즈를 해서 여러분들이 사용을 할수 있도록 준비를 해놨기 때문에 이거는 이제 시작이고 이후에는 훨씬 더 많은 컨텐츠를 저희가 이제 준비할 생각입니다. 뭐 인적 투자 그리고 컨텐츠를 로컬라이즈 한다는 거그 외에는 저희가 인프라 부분에서도 투자를 지속적으로 하고 있습니다. 저희가 2013년 5월에 처음으로 그 CDN이라는 상품 저희 회사에서는 그걸 클라우드 프론트라고 얘기하는데요. CDN, 컨텐츠 전송을 할수 있는 엣지를 처음으로 2013년에 저희가 이제 구축을 해놨고 그거에 대한 사용량이 계속 증가를 하면서 증설할 니즈가 더 있어서 1월달 2015년에 저희가 또 하나의 엣지를 구축을 했습니다. 그 정도로 지금 국내에 있는 고객사들이 저의 그 CDN 상품을 잘 사용해서 한국에 있는 사용자들한테 서비스를 더 빠르게 지금 전송을 하고 있습니다. 제가 다시 한번 그 파트너 대해서 좀 말씀드리고 싶습니다. 저희는 국내에서 클라우드 컴퓨팅이 성공적으로 계속 성장하기 위해서는 저희 혼자서 할 수는 없다고 생각합니다. 파트너가 꼭 필요하다고 생각을 해요. 그래서 클라우드 컴퓨팅이 계속 증가를 하고 또 AWS 사업이 계속 커지면서 거기에 맞게끔 저희는 파트너사들한테 지속적으로 어떤 투자를 통해서 파트너사의 역량도 계속 키워나가고 있습니다. 그래서 국내에 있는 고객사들이 직접 하는 게좀 어려우면 은 저희 파트너들이, 그 많은 파트너들이 도움을 할 준비가 돼 있다는 것을 여러분들한테 말씀드리고 싶습니다. 그래서 오늘 밖에서 그 부스를 이제 보시다, 보신 것 같은데 많은 파트너들이 이미 저희랑 아주 그 밀접하게 일을 하고 있는데 그 중에서 어, 이 행사를 위해서 같이 이제 준비한 그 플래티넘 파트너 그리고 이제 골드 파트너 실버 파트너 그리고 마지막은 브론즈 파트너 사들과 이 행사를 이제 준비하기 준비를 했습니다. 그래서 그 파트너 사들한테는 너무나 감사하다는 말씀을 다시 한번 그 말씀해 드리고 싶고요. 그리고 어, 오늘 그 키노트를 발표할 그 Matavis 저희 회사의 Global Principal Solutions Architect를 이 무대로 모시겠습니다. 박수 부탁드립니다. 안녕하세요. 감사합니다. That's all the Korean I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> so from now it'll be English. Hopefully uh, the translation will convey my, my thanks and my gratitude at the opportunity to speak here today. Um, I'm very excited to be here at the first Korean summit. Um, as Doug mentioned, I'm a global principal solutions architect with Amazon Web Services. Um, I'd like to start by talking about my journey with Amazon uh, and a little bit of the Amazon journey to get here today. Um, I joined Amazon in November of 2005. Um, and if you can do the math, that means I joined before AWS existed as we see it today. Um, I was lucky enough to have that opportunity to join um, and actually be a product manager for one of our early web services that resulted or focused around the, um, the retail website. I spent about three years as a product manager uh, owning that service and the associates platform. Um, and that gave me the opportunity to see how Amazon builds services, how they focus on customer needs and evolve those capabilities, and how they integrate and innovate on, ha on behalf of the customer. Um, that same knowledge got me excited about joining the AWS team as it grew. Um, and so I was the second solutions architect for AWS. I joined that team in February of 2009 and have since been working with customers and partners in the field, uh, explaining the AWS platform, how it works, um, and helping advise customers about the best way to build solutions on top of AWS. Um, I also was involved in helping to start up our professional services business, and most recently I'm focused as a partner solutions architect on software as a service architectural best practices. Um, I found the last six years has been an incredible journey in helping customers understand how AWS works and understand the best practices to use the platform, 
as well as to learn how we can evolve our platform on their behalf and work hand in hand as a partner uh, with you, uh, whether you be a customer or a partner, to evolve our platform to meet your needs. Um, that's really been my focus uh, as a solutions architect. Um, and it really mirrors kind of how we have grown as a company. So I'd like to cover a short history of Amazon, how we got here. Um, many of you may know Amazon from the retail business, which is where we started. Obviously, the early days, Amazon was a retail company. But Amazon, from the very beginning, was a technology company that chose to be the first thing they built be a retail experience. Um, so always, from the get-go, it was focused on technology, on capabilities to grow and evolve that platform, on building a website that could scale to the incredible demand that we found early on, whether it be for books, music, movies, uh, whatever else we, we chose to get into, and or the over 40 product categories we're in uh, today. Um, that capability, however, sparked a, a level of expertise and innovation on our behalf that we felt like we needed to share. So the next business that Amazon moved into, beyond just the retail experience, was really actually a seller business. The opportunity to take our experience in building a web scale platform um, that actually delivered content. And not only was about the content on the site, but also the ability to ship products and get them to your doorstep quickly, but we made that open to the world. We exposed that capability to third parties, companies that one could consider competition, for example, uh, that wanted to leverage our experience on our platform. And we recognized a need there, an opportunity for Amazon's experience with retail platforms uh, to be reused and to have a win-win relationship with us and our retail partners that use the platform. This same mentality, this same focus and approach was how we decided to build Amazon Web Services. We looked at the tools and the technology that we had to build for our developers internally. In order for us to scale and grow our business, we had to create a lot of infrastructure tools and capability. We recognized an opportunity there. Back in 2002, when we started experimenting in web services, we recognized that developers quickly would jump onto the platform and innovate um, using our tools and build amazing new capabilities and, and platforms. Um, so we wanted to build on that and grow that. So we took our own internal experience, our own ability to grow and run data centers at scale, our own ability to provision infrastructure dynamically and quickly, our own ability to deploy code. Um, Amazon's up to 50 million deployments a year now. Um, so it really is uh, an amazing uh, uh, growth rate that we've had. Um, and so that's how we have grown the AWS business, taking our experience in running and building a large-scale infrastructure and making it available to you so that you can innovate on top of what we've built uh, historically. And that's grown, obviously, up to over a million active customers so far. So it's been very successful. So I'd like to talk about how we're progressing, um, you know, how that business is growing for us as a whole. So we have over nine years of experience now with AWS um, you know, since launching uh, S3 in March of 2006. Um, and yet the pace of growth still has not slowed. We're seeing still incredible growth in the platform. And as you can see from this graphic right here, we're still seeing over 100% year-over-year growth in the S3 platform in terms of data transferred in and out. Um, that is excluding Amazon's own internal usage. So really, it's the, our customers, you, and others around the world are driving significant growth year over year for us and continue to do so. Um, so we do not see that trend slowing. We see that only increasing over time. The same can be said for our compute platform, EC2. Uh, this platform has grown 93% year over year. So we're seeing an incredible growth there as well, again, this is excluding Amazon's own internal usage of the platform. So this is only external customers that are choosing to leverage the compute capability. And we're still seeing significant growth rates on that platform. And then, of course, it's not just one customer. It's not one big partner. It's really a, a huge array of customers. As you saw in some of the introductory uh, slides, uh, over 190 countries. We have customers in over 190 countries um, and one million active customers today. Um, and active means that they've used our platform within the last month, actively using the services and capabilities. Um, so that growth rate continues to be staggering for us. So we're seeing a significant growth, not just with large players, but also around the world, small startups, enterprises, and more. And here's some examples. Um, Doug covered in the introduction uh, the, some of the local Korean 
um, uh, companies and, and partners that are being involved in, in our platform. But if you look more globally, um, we're seeing startup customers from around the world, names that you would recognize, uh, names like Pinterest um, for finding items you like and pinning them to your board. Uh, Rovio, if you like Angry Birds, they have them. Um, you know, Dropcam for capturing video and storing it. Uh, the ability to, uh, to get recommendations on Yelp is generated through the AWS platform. Um, and we also see a wide variety of, of capabilities in the gaming space with Riot Games, uh, uh, information with Reddit, um, really a, a wide array of innovative ideas coming from startups around the world. But the same can be said in the enterprise space. In the enterprise space, we're seeing a transformation occur where they're recognizing the need to move quickly. They're recognizing they're competing now with these startups in their industries. So brands like Newsweek um, in the media space are using AD the AWS platform for delivery. Um, you know, companies like uh, NTT Docomo or Nintendo, um, major corporations that are leveraging the AWS platform uh, in telecom, in gaming. So it's not just a uh, a consumer experience. It's not just a startup experience. It's really broadly used uh, throughout the world by some of the largest brands. Um, Unilever, for example, has over 1,500 websites that they run on top of the platform. Um, so there's a large uh, consumption of the platform, uh, both at the startup and at the enterprise level. And it just continues, this trend continues when we look at the public sector. Over 11,000 uh, nonprofit institutions, over 3,400 educational institutions, um, hundreds of government agencies uh, in countries around the world are leveraging this platform. Um, names that you'd recognize in the day-to-day, -day, such as MIT, University of Oxford, Stanford, um, all of these institutions are leveraging AWS as a way to advance either their own internal systems or research or doing what makes most sense for them to move quickly and evolve their, their, uh, their platforms and needs based on the AWS platform. But it's not possible to get all this without some help from the ecosystem. And we, we, as Doug mentioned up front, we're making investments around the world in the ecosystem. We think it's critical that we have partners uh, that work with us. So whether it be a premier consulting partners, your large global systems integrators like an Accenture, a uh, Capgemini, a Wipro, a Cognizant, or even your cloud-first, cloud-oriented uh, systems integrators such as uh, SecondWatch or CloudNexa. Um, we're seeing these, uh, these uh, partners have a very successful opportunity to work directly with us and grow their business with new offerings, whether it be new service offerings or even new products they generate. And the same thing is true in the ISV space. Names such as Adobe and Autodesk are expanding their existing product offerings and leveraging the cloud as a way for them to capture new customers and a way for them to capture new business markets. Um, you also see the same thing with, uh, with you know, Microsoft or Intel, large organizations that are seeing the cloud as a mechanism for them to evolve their offerings and their platform. Um, and then you know, tools like SAP and Tableau, large uh, enterprise data analysis or ERP systems, um, which are really the core in many cases of a large enterprise, also run uh, effectively and efficiently uh, directly on top of the AWS platform. But it's not just us who are saying this. Um, this is a Gartner Magic Quadrant. So if you're familiar with the analyst community, um, Gartner is a large uh, international analyst that looks at technology and analyzes its consumption in the, in the space. Um, it's hard to see, but that dot in the top right, the little blue one, that's Amazon Web Services. All the rest of the dots, that's the rest of the cloud space as they see it. Gartner has uh, estimated that we have over five times uh, the capability and, and infrastructure of the next 14 uh, partners or next 14 cloud providers combined. Um, so really being a leader in the space, not only in terms of capability, but also in terms of scale and infrastructure available to you to work with today. And it's also uh, another testament to our success um, that if you look at the pace of growth uh, in the industry and you look at the multi-billion dollar enterprise IT companies around the world, um, at the top of that graph you'll see Amazon Web Services has been growing at over 40% uh, as a, our most recent year-over-year -year growth rate, whereas the next highest uh, 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 multi-billion dollar IT company is only growing around 15%. So we're seeing significant growth in the space. It continues to amaze us how quickly customers, partners uh, around the world are adopting and building on top of the platform, and it's evidenced by the growth rates we're seeing um, so far. 
So what it's really telling us is that cloud is the new normal. What was once a, uh, uh, perhaps a, a buzzword, uh, perhaps just a, a choice um, that maybe some companies might use, cloud is becoming a, a, a standard uh, in many cases. Uh, companies are no longer asking if they're going to move to the cloud, they're asking when they're gonna move to the cloud. That conversation has changed, and that has been exciting for me, having had that conversation for the last six plus years, seeing that transition occur in those enterprises. It's no longer a, okay, well, maybe I'll use it. It's a, what's the right workload? How fast can I move? What is the right opportunity for me? Uh, and that's really what the transition has become. So let's look at some of those patterns. What are people doing with the AWS platform? What, what things are the right fit, if you will, from their perspective? Um, the first is, I think, the most obvious uh, pattern people think of, which is startups. Building a business from scratch. Um, the cloud is immediately attractive for several reasons. Um, obviously, having no legacy, no back, background, no existing infrastructure or systems, it makes sense to move forward in a new paradigm, to, to use the latest approach. Um, that also means they have no dependencies. They're not worried about building into an existing infrastructure, uh, tying into uh, some historical uh, services or capability. They can build net new on top of the platform. Um, but obviously, critical for a startup is that low cost uh, structure for them starting. So because the AWS platform is a pay-as-you-go, pay-for-what-you-use model, that means that a startup doesn't have to worry about building a whole bunch of capital to build a data center. They can start using the AWS platform, and as their business grows, which it should line up with their revenue growth, then their costs grow underneath it. So it really allows them to have a, the ability to grow quickly and yet still have a cost structure that matches their growth rate. Um, and quickly is the watchword for the startup. The ability to move quickly, to jump into a new space and have immediate success is really the goal. And that's what the AWS platform is there to provide. Enable that innovation, enable that quick speed of movement. And it's not just uh, in new spaces. We're seeing this quick innovation, we're seeing this ability to disrupt existing industries occur again and again. Whether it be hotels or storage or gaming, um, we're seeing companies uh, around the world ch change how consumers use these capabilities. So for example, Airbnb allows people to book rooms in private residences around the world. So I'm no longer tied to having to pick a specific hotel. I could choose a two bedroom flat in London if I so choose. And having that ability has changed how people think about vacationing, how they travel around the world, how they choose to uh, book their next uh, business trip or vacation. Do they bring the family along? Airbnb has been able to, with the help of the AWS platform, transform how people think about booking hotels around the world. And this is an existing business that was well-defined and well-known, but Airbnb was able to disrupt and transform that. The same thing is true as Dropbox and storage. The idea of backup to your local hard drive or you know, maybe a tape, this idea of where I put my, my important data and how I kept it, Dropbox has been able to transform the, not only the backup and archiving of your content, but also the accessibility available around the world available on any device. Um, this is really a, a transformation in the entire storage space, and Dropbox was able to leverage the flexibility and power of the AWS platform to get there. And to tell you more about how startups transform businesses and do more with AWS is designer at Illuminix, Mr. Kim. Design 이 서른 장의 이미지가 빠른 속도로 재생이 되면서 인간의 뇌에는 영상으로 인식이 되는 겁니다. 그리고 평균 작업 시 이제 고급 퀄리티 작업을 할 때는 이한 장을 만들기 위해서 고급 컴퓨터에서 두 시간 정도의 시간이 소요가 되는데요. 
단순하게 계산하자면 은 1분짜리 영상을 만들기 위해서는 한 장당 2시간, 1초에 30프레임, 1분에 60초 즉 1분이라는 상대적으로 짧은 영상을 만들기 위해서는 3,600시간이라는 굉장히 긴 고사양 컴퓨터에서도 필요한 그 연산 시간이 필요합니다 이 현실적으로 불가능한 시간 작업을 단순하게 줄이기 위해서는 분산된 연산이 필요한데요 여러 대의 고사양 컴퓨터를 병렬 연결해서 병행으로 연산 작업을 수행하는 작업입니다 이런 시스템을 랜더 팜이라고 부르는데요 이럴 경우에는 컴퓨터 한 대로 고사양 컴퓨터 한 대로 3,600시간 걸리는 작업이 두 대로 나눠서 할 경우 1,800시간 10대의 경우 360시간 100대의 경우 36시간 200대의 경우는 18시간이라는 현실적으로 작업 가능한 시간을 줄어들게 됩니다 여기서 중요한 점은 클라우드의 특성상 컴퓨터 한 대를 3,600시간을 대여하나 컴퓨터 200대를 18시간 대여하나 가격이 똑같은 점인데요 제가 외국 애니메이션에서, 애니메이션 회사에서 작업을 할 때는 많은 비용을 내고 회사에서 자체적으로 이런 랜드팜 운영을 했습니다 하지만 한국에 와서는 제 소규모 스튜디오를 운영하다 보니까 이런 인프라를 이제 구축할 여유가 없었어요 그래서 클라이언트들께서 많이 영상 프로젝트 일을 하셨는데 저희가 그걸 소화를 못하는 경우가 되게 많았는데 AWS를 사용하기 시작하면서 이제 옛날에는 시도조차 못했던 프로젝트를 큰 어려움 없이 아주 성공적으로 진행할 수 있었습니다 그리고 저한테 가장 중요한 점은 고가의 장비나 운영비를 마련하기 위해서 일하는 것보다는 제가 생각하기에 재밌고 새롭고 크리에이티브한 일에 이제 집중할 수 있는 여유를 주었는데요 AWS가 저에게 준몇 가지 장점만 말씀드리자면 우선은 모빌리티입니다 어, 제 클라이언트가 전 세계에 퍼져 계시다 보니까 어디서나 언제나 제가 필요할 때 제가 필요한 만큼의 컴퓨팅 파워를 구할 수 있다는 게 굉장히 큰 장점이었고요 많은 파일들이 벌써 클라우드에 올라가 있기 때문에 세계 어디서든지 간에 제가 원하는 시간에 작업할 수 있다는 큰 장점이 있었습니다 그리고 민첩성인데 어, 시스템적으로 AMI 이미지를 이용해서 인스턴스를 복제하는 그런 시스템을 쓰기 때문에 예전에 이제 업그레이드 같은 거 하는데 굉장히 오랜 시간이 걸렸는데 지금은 제가 인스턴스 이미지만 관리만 잘하면 굉장히 빠른 속도로 업데이트 가능하고요 이게 가능하다 보니까 어, 필요한 일에 맞춰서 제 워크플로우를 수정해서 되게 민첩하게 움직일 수 있는 기회를 많이 주었습니다 그리고 속도인데 이거는 제가 필요한 만큼 얼마든지 인스턴스를 늘릴 수가 있고 방금 전에 말씀드린 대로 총 비용 같기 때문에 같은 비용으로 훨씬 더 빠르게 작업할 수 있다는 장점을 주었고요 가격은 보시다시피 엄청나게 긴 시간이 소유가 되기 때문에 AWS 주는 인스턴스의 낮은 가격이 저한테 큰 비용 절감 효과를 주었습니다 그리고 그 비용 절감 효과 덕분에 다른 스튜디오들과 경쟁력이 생겼고요 더 중요하게는 이제 제가 원하는 퀄러티를 원하는 만큼 작업할 수 있는 시간적 여유를 저에게 주었습니다 그리고 접근성인데 이거는 제가 IT 전문가가 아니기 때문에 AWS에서 주는 기본적인 OS 템플릿을 이용해서 상대적으로 굉장히 빠른 시간 안에 제가 원하는 워크스테, 이렇게 워크플로우를 만들 수가 있었고요 그리고 인터넷상에 벌써 굉장히 많은 정보가 있기 때문에 제가 필요한 정보를 쉽게 얻을 수가 있었습니다 그리고 편의성은 깔끔하고 강력한 온라인 UI를 이용해서 제가 필요에 따라서 굉장히 빠르게 제가 원하는 워크플로우를 이제 실행시키고 종료시킬 수가 있었고요 이런 장점들 다 <웃음> 종합을 해서 IT 전문가도 아닌 디자이너인 저로서 온라인에 있는 어, 자동화된 클라우드 랜더팜 만들 수가 있습니다 그래서 필요에 의해서 제가 필요한 만큼의 컴퓨팅 파워를 버튼 클릭 몇 번으로 만들 수가 있었고요 어, 제 작업이 다 마무리했을 때는 버튼 클릭 한 번으로 제가 사용한 비용만큼만 내고 시스템을 종료시킬 수 있는 굉장히 편리성도 같이 제공해 주었습니다 그리고 뒤에 있는 이제 도표는 제가 많이 쓰는 AWS 제공하는 서비스인데요 저 오렌지 색깔이 이제 제 서울에 있는 로컬 컴퓨터이고 작업이 끝나고 준비된 파일을 온라인 클라우드에 있는 EC2 랜드 팜으로 보냅니다 그럼 거기서 이제 병렬로 컴퓨터가 하나씩 렌더를 다 하면 은그 렌더링 프레임들을 <웃음> 빠르고 안정적인 S3 업로드를 한 다음에요 거기서 제가 필요한 파일만 병행으로 굉장히 빠른 속도를 받고 작업이 다 마무리되면 은이 모든 파일을 글레이셔라는 저 비용 그리고 반영구적인 어, 스토리지를 백업을 할 수가 있습니다 그러면 이제 제가 작업한 많은 파일들이 클라우드에 존재하기 때문에 굉장히 안정적이고 비용 절감 효과도 큽니다 어, 전 인터넷 세대가 저에게 준큰 선물은 개개인성이라고 생각을 합니다 개개인성이란 이제 개인이 원하는 대로 원하는 곳에서 원하는 방식으로 원하는 일을 할수 있다는 이제 장점인데요 어, AWS가 저에게 준 거는 그런 
개개인성을 이래도 적용할 수 있게 해줬다고 생각을 해요 그래서 저는 음, 개개인의 상상력에 맞춰서 원하는 작품을 만들어 나갈 수 있는 AWS는, AWS는 굉장히 창의적인 도구라고 생각을 합니다 감사합니다 But speed is not just for startups. Speed is for everyone. Uh, companies of all size need this speed to market, this agility, in order to compete in today's world. Let's take an example. In the old world, uh, provisioning infrastructure was a large capital expense up front. You had to buy the servers, you had to rack and stack them, you had to put the infrastructure in place. Uh, and then you only had basic compute and storage capabilities. You still had to build advanced services on top of that. Um, and of course, you were responsible for those future feature upgrades. If you wanted advanced networking, if you wanted to have larger instance types or more memory, you then own that problem of how to provision that infrastructure and then rotate it into place. Or you worked with a, a partner who did that. Uh, and it, we were slow to get new capabilities. The speed with which you could evolve that platform was hampered um, by your ability to appreciate hardware and your ability to roll out new capabilities. Now let's look at the AWS approach. Uh, now you start with a low variable cost. You pay for what you use. If you start a new business or you start a new venture and it turns out it's not successful, you can shutter that and you no longer own the infrastructure uh, behind that approach. Whereas on the flip side, if it becomes incredibly successful, you no longer have to pay a penalty uh, for growing so fast outside of your infrastructure and losing customers. You can grow with us and the cost tracks that. It's a broad and deep platform. So not only is there a deep infrastructure services and core services around storage or compute, but on top of that, it has a, a wide array of capabilities, whether it be uh, petabyte scale data warehousing with Redshift, or the ability to stream uh, thousands and millions of messages per second with Kinesis into the platform. Um, it's a really flexible approach. Um, and of course, everything arrives daily. New features appear um, without you having to do any work. You just have to maybe change your app or evolve your approach uh, to consume those and they're ready to use when they land um, on your desk. So really, it's a completely different approach to infrastructure and IT. And one of our key uh, hallmarks of how we do this is to continue to innovate on your behalf. One of our focus, uh, focuses at Amazon is really innovation. Um, and this graph is, is an indication of how we think about that. Um, so in the last year alone, in 2014, we launched 516 new features or services. And these weren't simple you know, uh, uh, options in, a, in an API, but rather complete new services, deep capabilities, additional instance types, uh, new regions and capabilities in, in our uh, availability zones, um, new networking uh, components, really across the board, a wide array. And this, as you can see from that graph, is gonna continue. This is a hallmark of how we think about the platform. We're gonna continue to innovate on your behalf and make it available to you so that you can be innovative on top. And to give you an idea of what some of the customers are doing in that space, here's some examples. Um, Singapore Post, for example. Uh, traditional mail. Um, seems like it's a, sort of a shrinking business. But they decided they wanted to do something new. They wanted to innovate in their business. They decided to launch an e-commerce capability. AWS gave them the ability, within months, to try out 10 different approaches to how they might choose to build an e-commerce capability. And then within, within a matter of months, once they landed on that approach, we're able to launch and, and completely roll out a whole new e-commerce capability. That e-commerce capability has been so successful for them, it now constitutes 27% of the overall revenue to the Singapore Post organization. Um, oh, and by the way, it cost them 50% less than if they'd done it on their own. So it really is about that agility, that speed to try things out and innovate, and then to move forward in the best direction. Another example is MLB StatCast. So I'm sure many of you remember Game 7 of the World Series last year. Eric Hosmer whacks one into the gap between second and short. Joe Panic makes a diving save, grabs it, flips it up to Crawford, who flings it across over to the first baseman and gets Hosmer out. Right? An unbelievable play. First reversal in the World Series with instant replay. MLB StatCast was collecting information live that day. MLB StatCast was able to analyze that Hosmer was out by 0.2 seconds. And by the way, if you had if not slid, but rather ran through first, like they always tell you in baseball, he would have been safe by a foot. That capability came from the, uh, the ability to capture real-time information from the field. Every day, MLB StatCast captures 17 petabytes of information about what's occurring in the game. For example, they're capturing the location 
of the baseball 2,000 times a second and ingesting that information. This allows them real time to present information into the StatCast platform to show you what's going on. So next time Shin Jin Ryu has a great game for the Dodgers, you can go to StatCast to see exactly how his curveball or his, or his slider made the critical play. So it's an important capability for them, and it's changed how people analyze and look at the baseball game. And here to tell you more about how companies change their approach and innovate on the AWS platform, I'd like to introduce Director of SM, SM Entertainment, Mr. Jun. ね、最近は、ソニーステークホルダーを進めるのはちょっと、反応が良かったですね。で、こちらは、SM <笑> 두 번째가 미디어 커머스와 어뮤즈먼트. 어, 가깝게는 대표적으로는 가깝게 여기 삼성역 출구 쪽에 있는 코엑스 아티움이라는 건물을 통해서 MD, 그다음에 스튜디오 체험, 또 홀로그램 상영 등을 운영하고 있습니다. 세 번째는 제가 가장 많이 인볼브 되어 있는 새로운 IT와 모바일 플랫폼을 만드는 모바일 엔터테인먼트 플랫폼 사업을 영위하고 있습니다. 이를 세 가지 어드 사업 영역을 기반으로 해서 저희 이제 SM의 서비스 그리고 AWS와 함께하는 비전에 대해서 말씀드리겠습니다. SM 타워는 오피셜한 SM의 총체적인 정보를 제공하는 서비스로, 뭐 아티스트의 정보, 또 디스코그래피 그리고 바이오그래피 그 밖에 각각 아티스트 웹사이트를 통해서 어, 팬들과의 소통을 이뤄내고 있습니다. SM 타워 나오는 좀더 어, 핫한 정보들을 타임라인 형식으로 접할 수 있도록 하고 어, 대외적인 SNS의 전체 정보들을 취합하여 제공하는 서비스입니다. 일본에서 꽤 좋은 반응이 일어나고 있습니다. 그 밖에 말도 많고 탈도 많은 가장 핫한 아티스트인 엑소의 글로벌 팬클럽 서비스인데요. 어, 저, 일단 엑소에 저희가 오픈을 하면서 어, 로컬 IDC 자원을 통해서 말자 대응을 했었다가 아, 엄청난 트래픽이 몰려서 일단 AWS의 성공적 마이그레이션 하면서 이를 대응했습니다. 초기 90만부터 시작해서 3주 동안 300만의 회원 가입이 이루어졌고요. 이 기간 동안 동접자는 90만 명을 유지했습니다. 에브리싱은 모바일 가라오케 서비스로 SM 엔터테인먼트 그룹에서 가장 핫하게 밀고 있는 서비스고 좀더 저에게 가치가 있는 것은 어, 최초로 AWS 상에서 기획하고 개발하고 AWS의 컨설턴트들과 협업해서 만들어진 서비스로 지금 최적화돼서 운영되고 있습니다. 앞서 에브리싱의 어떤 구조들을 간략히 말씀드리면 에브리싱은 어, 도쿄 리전을 중심으로 해서 RDS, EC2, S3, 또 클라운드 프론트 같은 코어한 서비스들을 주 사용하고 있지만 어, 코드단에 있어서의 API와 그 밖에 다양한 서비스들도 배치하여 사용 중에 있습니다. 아, 좀더 다양한 얘기들을 말씀드리면 앞서 말씀드렸던 대표적인 서비스 이외에도 저희 내부에서는 더 많은 서비스 그리고 더 많은 시스템들이 AWS상에서 개발되어지고 운영되고 있습니다. 이건 비단 사용자들을 대상으로 하는 팬들을 대상으로 하는 대외적인 서비스뿐만 아니라 저희 내부에 EIP나 그룹웨어들도 개발되어 운영을 준비 중에 있습니다. 어, SM 엔터테인먼트는 잘 알고 있는 것처럼 엔터테인먼트 그룹이지만 꽤 많은 I, IT 자원을 가지고 있고 어, 꽤 괜찮은 인재들도 포진해 있습니다. 그럼에도 불구하고 전문적인 IT 기업들에서는 
엔터테인먼트의 IT가 얼마나 하겠어라는 약간의 편견을 좀 가지고 계셨고 그런 것들이 AWS와 함께 하면서 어느 정도 상쇄되었다고 느껴집니다. 그리고 더욱이 오늘 제가 이 자리에 이렇게 키노트 연사로 있었, 있다는 것만으로도 이것이 반증되는 게 아닐까 생각하고 있습니다. SM에는 이 밖에도 많은 아티스트들이 되기 위한 연습생들, 연습생들을 보유하고 있습니다. 이들이 데뷔해서 성공하고 발전되는 과정이 많은 스타트업들이 만들어져서 또 발전하고 성공하는 케이스와 유사합니다. AWS는 이런 유연함과 또 확장과 축소들이 다이나믹하기 때문에 저희한테 적합한 서비스가 될수 있었습니다. 전체적으로 저희 현재 전체 자원의 서비스 자원의 약 70% 정도가 AWS 상에서 운영되어지고 있고 앞으로도 더 확장될 가능성이 있습니다. 물론 그것은 지금처럼 AWS가 지속적으로 발전한다는 것을 전제로 할때 말입니다. 그리고 클라우드를 얘기할 때 가장 많이 얘기하는 것들 중에 하나가 보안이라는 측면입니다. 보안은 로컬 IDC 센터를 운영했을 때의 보안과 같은 맥락으로 보면 분명히 모자랄 수 있지만 분명히 제 관점은 관점과 포맷이 달라지면 내용이 달라집니다. 보안도 이런 측면에서 변주어서 봐야 될 것이고 저는 AWS 보안을 신뢰할 만하다고 말씀드릴 수 있겠습니다. AWS 가장 마음에 드는 점은 원활한 소통과 그리고 경제성 여기서 경제성이란 건 비단 저렴하다는 뜻이 아니라 충분히 경제적 가치를 가지고 있다는 뜻이고요. 또 적절한 타이밍을 통해서 지속적인 기능 지원을 이뤄내고 있습니다. 마지막으로 간략히 말씀드리면 SM 엔터테인먼트는 아티스트와 음악, 컨텐츠를 기반으로 해서 가상 국가를 꿈꾸고 있습니다. 그리고 이, 이런 가상 국가의 실행 방안으로 코어 커넥티비티라는 것들을 명명, 명명하고 있는데요. 이 코어 커넥티비티는 크게 이 쌓여진 많은 서비스들을 통해 이루어진 빅데이터를 기반으로 움직이고 있고 그 빅데이터를 통해서 아티스트와 팬들이 좀더 밀접하게 연동될 수 있도록 하고 있습니다. 이러한 가상 국가를 실질적으로 운영하고 있는 건 어떤 도로, 항만, 전기, 스토어 같은 기관 시설이 텐데요. 이런 기관 시설을 담당하고 있는 중추적인 역할을 AWS가 담당하고 있습니다. AWS는 앞으로도 지속적으로 저희와 함께 파트너십을 공고히 해가리라 믿고 이를 통해서 좀더 가속화되고 발전하리라 믿습니다. 감사합니다. 감사합니다. But customers want it all. They don't just want the speed of agility. They just don't want core resources. They want the complete package. They want all of the pieces that come with the AWS platform. So when you think about what is agility, It really is about that ability to quickly provision what you want, but also the ability to save time because you have access to a broad and deep platform that has all the services you need, either at the core level or even the advanced services on top. It shouldn't be your business to have to reinvent the wheel and to create something others have done before. You should be focusing on how you can innovate for your customers and focus on what your business is about and not necessarily the core infrastructure that sits underneath it. Um, that's really what uh, we think of agility and what it's about. And that's why we built this platform as we see it today. Um, 40 services um, exist in the AWS platform today, all the way from your core infrastructure, regions around the world, availability zones, um, so you can do highly available architectures inside of a single region, uh, points of presence for a CDN, um, over 50 around the world for quick deployment of, inf uh, of content and data, Um, moving into core services, the things that everyone um, thinks of when they think of virtualization. Networking and, and servers and storage and, and databases as a service. All of those core capabilities you need to, to bring any existing application over as is. But then we've continued to move up the stack in terms of the technology we provide. Um, focusing on administration and security, a consistent security model around the world that allows you to, to lock down access to the infrastructure, who can call, what uh, APIs, who can manage what uh, resources in the AWS platform. The ability to integrate that with existing Active Directory or on-premises -premise, uh, uh, identity stores. Uh, the ability to bridge that into this environment. Um, key management and rotation 
um, key aspects for encryption technologies. And then as you go up the stack, you see a wide variety of different application type services, whether it be analytics with uh, real-time streaming of data with Kinesis and petabyte scale data warehousing with Redshift, uh, or uh, you know, application services such as elastic transcoding of, of video and audio, um, the ability to have email, outbound email services, um, application streaming or workflow capabilities. All of these are discrete services that are available on the platform for you to integrate with an existing architecture or to build into a net new approach. And then, of course, it doesn't stop there. We then focus on developer tools and operations. What many folks have focused on uh, in the industry today, things like continuous integration and continuous deployment. Um, we have tools around that in terms of uh, code deployment to the platform, a one-click web deployment with things like Elastic Beanstalk, um, resource templates with cloud formation that allow you to define an entire environment from the network all the way through the application servers and databases, and with a single button click, deploy that complete infrastructure. Um, really a broad array of services to make it easy for you to deploy and, and manage that infrastructure. And even mobile, whether it be synchronization of identity, um, you know, the analytics for how your mobile uh, applications are being used across the platform, or even push notifications to your mobile devices. Um, a, a wide array. Uh, of, of services and capabilities for you to build your application. But we've also even moved into the enterprise application space with uh, email and uh, document storage and collaboration, um, as well as um, our virtual desktop environment with Amazon Workspaces. Um, and as Doug mentioned up front, backing this entire capability is a wide variety of technical and business support individuals. Folks like myself as a solutions architect, sales account managers, support, um, you know, and documentation uh, across the board to help it be easy for you to get started. Um, and really, uh, the idea here is to enable you, as customers, to quickly build and deploy on this environment and even leverage our platform for selling your solutions. So AWS Marketplace, which allows you to publish your own um, uh, software solutions on top of the environment and allow people to consume it directly through the AWS platform, uh, allowing an easy mechanism for deploying your, your software and solutions on top of AWS. And it's not just the broad array of services, but even the depth inside of them. So for example, in the compute business, um, it's not a single instance type that we expect you to work inside of. It's actually several instance type families, whether it be a, a compute-based workload where you need high CPU, um, or a memory-based workload where you need lots of memory, so let's say a cache cluster. Um, we also have even GPU-optimized instances if you're doing graphics processing workloads. Um, and then, of course, storage or I.O. optimized. So we provide families of instance types um, to allow you to have the right exact server type for your particular workload. We do the same in storage as well with block storage, so elastic block store um, for storage services, or blob storage with uh, S3. Um, we offer different models of storage, whether it be SSD-based for higher performance, or even allowing you to provision a certain amount of performance that you expect for those drives. Um, up to, uh, for example, up to uh, thousands of IOPS for a single volume and up to 16 terabytes for a single uh, drive. And we even support relational databases. And this means not only the, the open source ones like a Postgres or a MySQL, but also the enterprise grade databases such as uh, Oracle or SQL Server. And in fact, we even have our own enterprise grade um, cloud oriented data uh, service, Aurora, which is MySQL compatible but designed around a, a petabyte scale uh, database model. And of course, we also integrate with auditing, security, and compliance services to allow you to not only provision infrastructure, but also analyze your consumption, make sure it's in alignment with your compliance needs and your security needs, and look at that environment on a regular basis for uh, analysis uh, and, and tracking. And of course, you know, the way to think about the cloud, it's obviously a popular term, and many folks are thinking about it today, um, but no two clouds are, are the same. And in fact, you can't think of an, a cloud uh, as an infrastructure as a service provider as a commodity. And this is Lydia Leong from, from Gartner, a, a, a worldwide analyst who analyzes the cloud space. Um, it really is more about finding the right um, cloud that fits your particular application needs. So instead of thinking about a standardized a set of core services that you then have to try and fit your shapes into, your workloads into. You need to think about how you can get a platform that has all the capabilities you need that match directly to your workloads. So that means a wide array of compute and storage capabilities, a wide array of application uh, services that sit on top. 
That's really the focus. Um, so what we're hearing from our customers is they really want to use that leading platform, AWS. They want the one that with the most functionality, the largest customer and partner ecosystem, um, so they can not only get launched quickly, but they have a whole support network, a, a local support network of partners and ISVs that can help them. And then, of course, that nine years of experience is a great thing, too. It helps them know that we worked out the, the kinks in the platform and continue to grow and evolve based on customer feedback and are doing the right things. And to tell you more about how enterprises leverage the platform, I'd like to introduce Vice President Samsung Electronics Printing Services, Mr. Hahn. 네, 안녕하세요. 반갑습니다. 어, 한호성 상무라고 합니다. 어, 저는 프린팅을 프린터를 개발을 하고 있습니다. 프린터에 들어가는 어, 소프트웨어와 솔루션을 개발하고 하고, 있, 하고 있습니다. 예. 어, 제가 오늘 소개드릴 거는 프린터 얘기를 좀 하려고 하고요. 어, 그 다음에 어, 도대체 아마존하고 프린터가 무슨 관계가 있는지 그리고 어, 프린터와 어, 삼성에서 지금 프린터도 만들고 있는가 프린터가 조금 이렇게 좀 어, 보링한 디바이스가 아닌가 요즘과 같은 시대에 누가 프린트를 하는가 라고 생각하실 것 같은데요 이 점에 대해서 저희가 어, 생각했던 바그 다음에 저희가 어, 저와 저희 팀이 어, 했던 것을 소개 드리고 여러분들과 공감하는 시간을 가졌으면 좋겠습니다. 예, 프린터가 여러분들 어떤 디바이스라고 생각하십니까? 프린터는 뭐 그냥 인쇄하는 장치죠. 여러분들 어, 보시면은 빨리 인쇄하고 그다음에 잼 만나고 그러면은 그렇게 그 이상의 것이 그렇게 필요 없는 그런 디바이스 디바이스였을 겁니다. 그런데 제가 오늘 어, 조금 정보라는 관점에서 프린터를 좀 다르게 해석을 해보겠습니다. 오른쪽에 보이시는 게 다양한 디지털 디바이스들입니다. 여러분들 많이 사용하시는 것들이고요. 왼쪽에는 종이로 된 문서입니다. 어, 오른쪽에 디지털 디바이스들이 갖고 있는 디지털 정보들이 있고요. 이것을 어, 왼쪽에 아날로그 디바이스로 옮기는 행위가 프린터, 프린트죠. 그렇죠? 그리고 반대로 하는 게 스캔입니다. 그러니까 프린트는 프린터는 디지털 정보와 아날로그 정보를 서로 변환해 주는 거기에 있는 최접점에 있는 디바이스가 프린터라고 어, 생각을 합니다. 예, 그런데 지금 어, 여러분들 잘 아시다시피 지금 IT 트렌드가 이런 식으로 어, 변화해 왔습니다. 어, 모바일 클라우드 시대로 오면서 정보를 다루는 사용자 수와 그 다음에 애플리케이션의 속, 숫자가 기하급수적으로 증가를 했죠. 어, 그러면서 IT의 중심축이 지금 하드웨어에서 어, 소프트웨어로 이동을 했습니다. 어, 여러분들이 일하시는 비즈니스 워크플로우, 비즈니스 인포메이션을 다루는 것들도 어, 크게 변화를 했는데요. 크게 세 가지로 어, 요약을 해볼 수 있겠습니다. 어, 모빌리티는 여러분들이 언제 어디서든지 정보들을 다루고 할수 있는 것들이고요. 시간적, 공간적 제약이 이제 더 이상 없어졌습니다. 그 다음에 어, 인터오프로빌리티인데요. 인터오프로빌리티는 어, 그런 디바이스들 간에 서로 정보들을 갖다 자유롭게 공유를 할수 있게 되었습니다. 그리고 PC 없이 각 기기들이 독자적으로 그 정보들을 갖다 다룰 수 있게 되었죠. 여기서 저희의 이제 고민이 생겼습니다. 저희 프린터는 아까 말씀드렸다시피 어, 하드웨어, 디, 하드웨어 중심적인 어떤 디바이스였는데 이런 IT 트렌드가 변함에 따라서 프린터는 어떤 식으로 변해야 될까 거기에 대해서 저희는 고민을 하게 되었고요. 어, 여기에 대해서 어, 어, 해결책을 찾은 것들을 오늘 여러분들께 소개 드리려고 하고 있습니다. 예, 여기 그 답으로 찾은 것이 저희는 삼성 스마트 UX라는 에코 시스템을 구축을 했는데요. 첫 번째는 플랫폼입니다. 어, 플랫폼은 어, 저희가 프린터에 10.1인치의 태블릿과 같은 그런 장치를 어, 디바이스에 부착을 시켰습니다. 그리고 거기에 어, 안드로이드 OS를 올렸어요. 그러니까 스마트폰을 사용하시는 분들이라면 누구나 친숙하게 프린터를 사용할 수가 있겠죠. 어, 그 다음에 이제 앱 솔루션들인데 어, 기존에 있던 프린트, 스캔, 카피와 같은 그런 앱들을 안드로이드 애플리케이션으로 개발을 했습니다. 그래서 그걸 프린터에 장착을 할수 있고 또 기존에 있는 안드로이드 애플리케이션들이 저희 프린터에 장착이 돼서 동작이 됩니다. 뭐 예를 들자면 
어, 앵그리버드와 같은 게임들도 저희 프린터에서 동작이 됩니다 뭐 누가 프린터 앞에서 게임을 하, 하겠느냐라고 생각하시겠지만 은 그런 사람들이 실제로 있더라고요 그리고 저희 여기 플랫폼에 어떤 앱들을 갖다 개발하고자 하시는 분들을 위해서 어, SDK를 오픈을 했고요 그 다음에 저희 어, 디바이스가 전 세계 어디에든지 있든지 간에 그 디바이스에서 직접 억세스할 수 있는 앱 센터를 오픈을 했습니다 여기에 저희가 그 아마존하고 같이 협업을 한 부분이 있습니다 어, 여러분들 그 피처폰하고 스마트폰의 차이가 뭔지는 잘 아실 겁니다 뭐 여러 가지가 있겠지만 은 어, 많은 사람들이 얘기할 때 가장 큰 차이는 확장성이라고 얘기들을 하죠 그러니까 어, 플레이스토어나 앱 센터를 갖다 접속을 해서 다양한 애플리케이션을 설치, 설치를 할수 있고요 그러면서 그 기능들이 계속적으로 확장을 할수 있는 겁니다 저희 이 스마트 UX 플랫폼도 처음 구입했을 때그 기능이 다가 아니라 다양한 애플리케이션들을 저희와 그 다음에 저희 파트너들이 계속적으로 공급을 하고 그것을 앱 센터에 올려놓음으로써 저희 고객들은 그 앱들을 계속적으로 다운로드해서 그 기능과 성능을 업그레이드를 시킬 수 있습니다 예, 그리고 마지막으로 어, 저희가 클라우드 프린트를 오픈을 했습니다 어, 이것은 어, 시간과 공간적인 제약을 받지 않고 어디서든지 간에 인쇄를 할수 있도록 하는 그런 서비스입니다 이 부분에서도 저희가 아마존과 협업을 해서 이 시스템을 쉽게 구축을 할 수가 있었습니다 예, 제가 지금까지 설명드린 내용을 어, 잠깐 어, 저희 동영상을 보시겠습니다 예. 예, 어떠세요? 여러분들이 지금까지 보셨던 프린터와는 조금 다른 모습이죠. 예, 그래서 어, 이제는 저희 그 앱센터를 어떻게 그 아마존과 구축하게 됐는지 어, 좀 설명을 드리겠습니다. 어, 저희가 앱센터를 기획할 당시에 어, 크게 두 가지를 놓고 고민을 했었습니다. 하나는 이제 온프리미스 서버를 두는 방식과 그 다음에 어, 아마존의 AWS 서비스를 갖다 이용하는 방법 두 가지를 놓고 고, 어, 고민을 했었는데요. 저희한테 가장 중요한 요구사항이 무엇일까 보면 은 저희는 한 전세계 한 80여 개국에 저희 제품을 런칭을 하고 아까 말씀드렸듯이 그 80여 개국에서 앱센터를 자유롭게 억세스를 할 수가 있어야 됐습니다 그리고 또한 가지는 시스템 사용자의 수가 계속적으로 가변적으로 변하기 때문에 어, 이 시스템의 프렉서빌리티가 가장 중요한 요소였습니다 어, 이 점에 대해서 저희가 그 AWS의 컨설팅 팀과 몇 차례 미팅을 했고요 어, 그 결과로 어, 여기 있는 아마존의 어, 클라우드 프론트와 그 다음에 일레스틱 빈스톡이 저희의 요구사항에 아주 적합하게 맞았다는 것을 알수 있었습니다 그래서 저희는 어, 이것을 선택을 할, 했고요 그리고 이 월드와이드로 저희가 이 앱센터에서 그 다운로드하는 속도를 한번 그 다운로드를 어, 속도를 갖다 측정해 본 결과인데요 어, 지역마다 좀 차이가 있습니다 근데 어, 사실은 여기 있는 것들은 그 지역의 로컬 네트워크의 속도에 좀 어, 디펜던스가 있습니다 근데, 근데 뭐이 월드와이드로 운영하는데 전혀 문제없이 지금 안정적으로 
어, 사용을 하고 있습니다. 참고로 저희 어, 서버는 미국 동부의 버지니아에 있고요. 한 52개 정도의 엣지 로케이션을 지금 사용하고 있습니다. 예. 클라우드 프린트라고 여러분들 어, 들어보셨는지 모르겠는데요. 아까 말씀드렸지만 은 어, 언제든지 어디서든지 쉽게 인쇄할 수 있는 서비스를 제공하는 겁니다. 어, 이거 하나의 예인데요. 저희 삼성전자에서는 이미 사용을 하고 있고 이건 제가 실제로 겪었던 예입니다. 여러분들도 이런 경험 있으실지 모르겠는데 출근하면서 어, 상사분이 보고를 해달라는 요청을 하십니다. 그러니까 막 바쁩니다 아침에 어, 오자마자 제 사무실이 35층인데 35층에 올라가서 뭐 바로 부랴부랴 PC를 켜고 문서를 열고 인쇄를 하고 그리고 내려가서 보고를 드리는 물론 일반적으로는 파워포인트로 하지만 은 급한 일이 생기면 이런 경우도 생기잖아요 근데 저희 그 AWS를 이용해서 삼성 클라우드 프린트를 이용을 하면 은 어, 출근을 하면서 모바일에서 33층에 있는 프린터로 바로 인쇄를 할 수가 있습니다 그래서 35층으로 안 가고 33층으로 가서 바로 어, 인쇄를 하고 보고를 드릴 수가 있었습니다 예, 그래서 저희가 이 AWS를 통해서 어, 프린트 서비스의 혁신을 다음과 같이 이루었습니다. 그런데 있어서 AWS는 어, 아주 에자일하게 어, 개발 및 인프라를 갖다 운영을 할 수가 있었고요. 그 다음에 비용이 굉장히 절감이 됐습니다. 온프리미스 서, 어, 서비스 서버를 갖다 구축을 했었으면은 초기 비용이 많이 들었을 텐데 AWS를 이용을 해서 어, 상담 부분 감, 감축할 수가 있었고요. 그리고 말씀드렸듯이. 글로벌 서비스가 아주 원활하게 됐고 그리고 인프라에 대한 어떤 고민 없이 저희는 저희가 원래 하고자 했던 비즈니스에만 초점을 맞춰 개발을 할 수가 있었습니다. 예, 그래서 저희는 이 스마트 UX 에코 시스템을 통해서 어떤 이 혁신을 이루었다고 라 생각을 하고 기존의 프린터, 하드웨어 중심적인 어떤 이런 OA 디바이스를 어, 소프트웨어 중심적인 IT 디바이스로 지금 탈바꿈을 시키는 첫 발걸음을 내딛었다고 생각을 합니다. 저희는 계속적으로 앞으로도 그 저희 고객의 밸류를 갖다가 계속적으로 창출하도록 노력을 할 것입니다. 예, 마지막으로 여러분들 여기 있는 냉장고하고 그다음에 프린터 간의 공통점이 뭔지 아십니까? 음, 냉장고는 집에서 프린터는 사무실에서 24시간 전원이 꺼지지 않는 디바이스입니다. 물론 프린터 끄시는 분들도 있더라고요. 근데 끄시지 않아도 됩니다. 전, 이 전원 그 전기세 그렇게 많이 안 나옵니다. 근데 어, 향후 이제 IoT 시대가 본격적으로 도래, 도래하게 돼 있을 때 어, 어떤 프린터가 지금 저희가 스마트 UX로 어, 탈바꿈했던 것처럼 어떤 IoT 허브로서의 역할을 할 것을 어, 기대해 주셔도 되겠습니다. 예, 감사합니다. As, as you can see, there's a wide variety of solutions that are out there today in terms of storage. Um, storage is a core component to most applications. Uh, the ability to access um, common file systems is becoming more and more common. Uh, you, you've seen our AWS platform, you've seen the usage, S3, EBS. Um, there's a wide array of capabilities that people can build today. But one commonality that many applications were built around was this common shared file system. Uh, content repositories for CMS systems, home directories for users. Um, this has actually presented a, a bit of a challenge uh, and actually an opportunity for AWS. One of my uh, early customers many years ago was a, a movie studio company looking to build a platform to deploy microsites for all their movie launches. Um, their architecture was built around this kind of a shared platform. So they had the problem of how to build a distributed clustered file system to handle hundreds, if not thousands, of server clients trying to deploy content in real time. So demand estimation was challenging. The ability for availability and performance as spikes occurred. Um, long lead times for getting new infrastructure. In their case, long lead times for configuring and deploying new cluster nodes. Um, and of course, the constant upgrade and refresh cycles. Um, so that's an obvious missing block. We saw that as a challenge. We, customers have asked for it. And in true Amazon fashion, our customer obsession won out. And I'd like to announce today 
the Amazon Elastic file system. So this is a brand new service and capability that allows customers uh, to go ahead and provision a file system to sit behind their uh, server infrastructure. Obviously some core components of something like that. It's a fully managed file system for EC2. So as you launch an instance, you can mount that file system behind the scenes. So if your application's built around that home directory model or shared repository model, it would be launched and mounted um, at, at launch time. It's obviously SSD based. It grows and, and shrinks as your usage grows and shrinks. Um, and it's a very high throughput with very low latency. Designed simply to solve that common problem of how do I have a shared file system behind my platform. Um, and of course, with many of our uh, advanced services beyond core infrastructure, the availability, durability, distribution of content, clustering, those are all things that are taken care of by the service itself. So you have the simple model of a easy to use, fully managed file system that's simple to deploy with a button click. It scales in seconds. It's got seamless integration with your existing application models. You can mount it like an NFS v4 mount point, and off you go. Um, so no upfront or minimum cost. So all of the work, the undifferentiated heavy lifting of building a clustered file system is no longer a challenge for you. Um, so it's simple to deploy, but it's also elastic. It grows dynamically and automatically. Um, as data is added and removed, we will continue to provision storage behind it. Um, there's no need to provision capacity or performance. That's part of the service itself. And you pay only for the storage space you use. So you're not provisioning a whole bunch of storage up front and then waiting um, to run out and then provisioning more. But rather, it goes ahead and grows automatically and you pay for what you use and, and consistent with the Amazon um, model. Uh, it's also scalable. So it's a file system for virtually any workload. Um, you can grow it to the petabyte scale um, through, uh, throughput and IOPS to that infrastructure scale automatically as we see your consumption scale. Um, it's got support for thousands of concurrent NFS connections. So that means you can have thousands of EC2 instances mounting this file system behind the scenes for a shared distributed file system infrastructure. And it's got consistent low latency access to the platform. This is our new Amazon EFS service. It will go into preview in the summer of 2015, but if you're interested, please feel free to sign up today at aws.amazon.com slash EFS. Thank you. <laughs> um, so uh, it, data services is another area we've seen a lot of demand and growth. Um, moving, using data more expansively, um, faster than any point in history. Um, so it's never been easier because of the AWS cloud. It's never been easier and less expensive to collect, store, analyze, and share data around the world. Um, and of course, AWS is fully loaded um, with big data in mind. That's our, real, that's our focus. We've built a core set of services that make that possible. Um, from sources of truth, data stores like S3, Glacier, or our new EFS Elastic File System, to high performance databases, um, and Amazon DynamoDB, or our uh, Aurora um, uh, MySQL compatible, uh, cloud-oriented, highly scalable database model. Um, and of course, uh, services around specific analysis, so streaming of data with Kinesis, uh, the ability to store and build a data warehouse of petabyte scale with Redshift, um, or running Hadoop in the cloud in a dynamic and flexible environment with Amazon EMR. I mean, broad analytics has been a common usage in the platform. So companies like Aon, who are doing risk management analysis, um, need to, to analyze large amounts of customer data to analyze their risk position. Um, uh, uh, the, quite a number of, of healthcare um, companies from Novartis, Bristol's Myers, Squid, and Merck are looking at you know, uh, drug development, delivery of, of, uh, of data, or sorry, delivery of drugs in their supply chain, um, and discovery of, of new opportunities, um, are using this big data platform as a way for them to analyze and grow their business. But it's not just about analyzing uh, what you see today but it's even about actually adopting a machine learning model, which says, let's take a look at what that data is that I have and what predictions can I make about that platform. Um, so companies like Netflix, who are making recommendations for what movies you should watch based on what you've seen today. Um, that's using this machine learning approach that's beyond just the analysis of the data, but rather generating predictions from it. Or even companies like Electronic Arts that are using that as a mechanism to predict scaling needs within their applications and their games. And of course, Amazon has a long history with this particular challenge. 
Um, that is a picture of Amazon's uh, first website, um, obviously a little outdated. Um, but it gives you a sense, even early on, we had uh, you know, eyes and editors. We had a, a service that actually would help recommend um, books um, for our first website. You know, we did customers who bought this also bought, natural language processing. These are problems we've been working on and, and trying to solve for the Amazon retail experience for many, many years. And of course, we had to provide that capability to our own internal teams. So this was a challenge that was faced not just by one team in the business, but really by many. Um, it was the spark for hundreds of new machine learning applications in the platform, whether it be item classification for, you know, what, what group does this belong in, this particular item, to demand estimation. How much should I order of this new uh, product coming out to anticipate what customers might buy? Um, customer support, analyzing behaviors and patterns um, in, and requests for support through the Amazon platform. Or even customer adoption models. How quickly do they adopt new technologies or, or new, uh, new products? Um, and then, of course, display advertising, sales lead ranking. A wide array of, of common prediction problems exist in the e-commerce space. And this has been something we've had to, to build for ourselves for many years. And so we ran an experiment. We actually uh, did this ourselves internally and said, let's take two senior developers and give them the ability to analyze the data set and, and predict and pr pr build a prediction model on top of that. Um, so we gave them, four, it took them two developers about 45 days uh, to go ahead and get to 92% accuracy on that prediction model using traditional tools and the traditional approach that they had taken. Um, we then said, what if we gave you a machine learning engine that is a tool set that you could build off of? Um, it took it, it, it jumped in and quickly ran common prediction models for you. It took a, a suite of well-known prediction algorithms that exist and then made those available to you as a, sing, as a single developer. That same approach was done by one developer using this new platform in 20 minutes. He got to 92% accuracy on predictions in 20 minutes. So that's pretty significant improvement in performance and capability. And this developer was significantly less senior than the two that worked on the original 45-day problem. So the point behind this is that we've now made this available to you. So we would like to announce the Amazon Machine Learning Service. It's a fully managed machine learning service for developers. So you can take your data today and start making predictions on what's going to happen with your data sets. It's really all about data-driven deployment and development. Um, the idea of analysis and reporting using things like Redshift, EMR, um, to uh, real-time dashboards in Kinesis um, and Lambda. And then uh, going to uh, the final uh, step of that process, which is really the prediction model. So saying, hey, I'm going to use this analysis and reporting tool set. I'm going to build a dashboard that shows me um, what I've gotten from this prediction model. I generate a prediction from that. And then I complete, continue that cycle and come back and continue to evolve my approach. Um, here's some... Uh, uh, some, some, uh, it, it really, the focus here is, is about predictive models and machine learning. That's really what we're trying to make available to you as a simple service. So some examples of how you might choose to use that. Um, so what customers are, are going to use your product? Looking at their current behavior patterns, looking at what they're doing today, um, and then determining whether they would actually get benefit from that. Um, based on what you know about an order, you might be able to analyze, is that order actually real or is it fraudulent? That's a, another common scenario that exists in the e-commerce space. Um, you know, what other articles are interesting based on what's happening in a news release? What are related, what's related content in that space? And these are just a few examples. You could imagine uh, in the manufacturing space, um, analyzing based on uh, a data coming from your supply chain, uh, which parts are going to break out, uh, break sooner? What parts are better for a particular application? How to optimize um, or predict whether there might be challenges in distribution of product um, throughout your supply chain. So really, uh, there's a wide variety of applications uh, for this particular approach. But machine learning has been a challenge for developers historically. First, they had to have a statistics background. They had to understand model building. They had to think about cross-validation, which algorithms to apply, what transformations to perform. Um, and it really became a, 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 a blocker to adopting machine learning in many organizations. Um, and then, of course, moving that into production, thinking about how to then run that in real time on a regular basis in a supported model that was generating real results and learning on a regular basis. And then, of course, the next challenge being, how do I then take this experiment in predictive analysis and move it to a scale model? 
Um, and so what we've done is added that capability as the Amazon machine learning service. So, so you can easily create machine learning models, visualize and optimize the results of those models, put those into production in seconds, so moving from a sample set approach to a full data set analysis um, and deploying that within seconds, and then, of course, using uh, battle-hardened technology, taking advantage of the years of Amazon experience in building predictive data models and deploying that um, quickly for yourself. Really very focused on ease of use and high performance. Um, you can train and optimize your models on you know, gigabytes of data. You can do batch process predictions. You don't have to do them in real time. You can do them offline if you so choose. Um, you really have the ability to do a real-time prediction with an API uh, in one click. So a, a very simple model, a simple approach, and it comes with a management console as well um, to go ahead and deploy that. And of course, obviously, the ability to do this without uh, deploying servers or provisioning any infrastructure. And so that's really the, the core focus of the Amazon machine learning platform. And now you have that capability made available to you. One of the other patterns we're seeing is that the old shackles are loosening. So let's take an example, the old world database model. Um, the the, the tie-in, the, the uh, requirement to uh, purchase very expensive proprietary um, you know, punitive licensing model database engines. Um, that's tied people down in terms of their ability to uh, deploy cost-efficient infrastructures and to move rapidly in their environments. Those, those things are changing. What we're seeing our customers uh, ask for is different approaches in those spaces. So for example, the consumption of things like MySQL and Postgres uh, as open source approaches has dr drastically grown over those uh, traditional models. But one of the challenges with that approach is getting to the scale and performance of proprietary databases can be hard with those approaches. To that end, um, we recently launched uh, Amazon Aurora, um, which is a MySQL compatible um, relational database as a service model, um, but really focused on uh, getting 5x performance of the high-end MySQL database at one-tenth the cost. And the, the goal here is that it's highly scalable um, so we're talking a petabyte scale database model. Thousands of, of customers were in the preview. Um, and this is really uh, something we've built and grown as a cloud-first database engine. So enterprise level scale, yet the flexibility and capability uh, of, of the open source model with MySQL compatibility. But that story continues. We see it over and over again, whether it be databases, but also even in the desktop environment. Physical desktops um, have been expensive, hard to manage, you know, hard to maintain, uh, physically distributed. It's been a challenge um, for many of our enterprise customers to maintain that large fleet of desktops around the world. And virtual desktops, um, you know, gives them that centralized management, which is a significant improvement, and they can deploy software, but oftentimes provisioning hardware for that, uh, provisioning the connectivity, um, performance can be poor, and it can be very expensive to switch over to the virtualized desktop model. So Amazon's taken on that model as well. And our approach is to use Amazon uh, workspaces, the desktop virtualization, the AWS way. Um, so no hardware or software to install. Um, access can be from any device, whether it be a laptop or a tablet, smartphone um, from around the world. Um, in, in, this integrates with your existing infrastructure. So your existing Active Directory uh, data store or corporate directory can be in integrated directly into this platform, allowing you to have the same username and password for logging in as you do to your existing laptops today. Um, and goes to, to the Amazon model, it goes down to a simple usage-based model, paying for monthly pricing, no long-term commitments, and it's half the price of existing on-premises uh, VDI solutions. Uh, again, a, another model on how we're changing how people think about consuming and deploying IT. Um, Johnson & Johnson, for example, has chosen 2015 as the year for the workspace, and so they're actually gonna be deploying over the next, over the next year over 25,000 um, individual workspace desktops, all of their customers, sorry, all of their consultants, I should say, and their internal employees will be leveraging that uh, platform as their work environment. So they've moved entirely to a virtualized desktop approach with the workspaces product. But the challenges still exist uh, in that space with desktop applications. How do I think about deploying uh, the desktop apps that need to be in there? Um, how do I think about utilization, uh, utilizing at the right level? Um, I have a lack of visibility uh, oftentimes into what's running on individual machines. Um, and of course, there's always those deployment challenges and the maintenance overhead. So we've actually made some changes and uh, some new services 
to address that uh, challenge as well. So there's two new capabilities we're rolling out to address uh, desktop deployments in the workspace environment. The first is AWS Marketplace for desktop apps. So the ability to purchase desktop applications through our AWS Marketplace and deploy them to your workspaces environments. Um, so a wide variety of popular desktop applications will be available. Um, you can provision those to your workspace desktops. And again, consistent with the AWS pricing model, you pay by the month. So as you consume those applications, you're charged on a monthly basis for, for its usage. Um, here are the major categories. Um, over 100 applications will be available today across 11 different categories, all the way from uh, accounts payable and billing to business intelligence, mapping and, and, and uh, geographic information systems, uh, illustration design tools. Um, so a wide variety of, of utilities, tools, and products you might be using today will be purchasable directly through the AWS Marketplace and then could be provisioned to your Amazon Workspaces environment. A second is the Workspaces Application Manager. So for any IT admin seeing this opportunity, they're saying, how do I manage and control what applications get deployed to those Workspaces environments? And that's where the Workspaces Application Manager comes in to package and manage the virtual applications that will be deployed to that environment. Um, and uh, they can be installed natively on the environment, um, but uh, it basically allows you to manage patches and backup through that Workspaces Application Manager tool. Both of those are available today um, and are uh, services that if you're looking in the workspaces environment are definitely worth checking out. Another trend we're seeing is that reinvention is continuous. Consider compute, for example. In 2006, we had one instance type. In 2015, we have several different families, not even uh, instance types, but a, a wide variety of families of instances. Um, but we're continuing that trend. We want to continue to evolve that space. So, we're, uh, we're seeing a, a trend also in the compute space for building with smaller blocks, um, even smaller than the virtual instance. And so uh, last year, we relaunched the EC2 container service, which allows you to deploy uh, containers, uh, Docker containers, to a cluster of EC2 instances. You can launch and terminate the containers. Uh, you have a cluster of EC2 instances you launch into. And then, of course, you can mount persistent volumes at launch and even have your own private Docker repository to support that. Um, uh, it's now generally available, so we launched it at the uh, end of last year, but now we've put it into general availability um, and actually made it available to all customers with a new management console, and we've expanded its geographic locations um, to several spots around the world and integrated with CloudTrail. So as, as you can see, this is one of the core focus areas for Amazon. We continue to evolve even as services launch. We continue to event and grow. It also has a new service for scheduling long-running applications. Um, so a new deployment scheduler that will deploy those containers out to the cluster as well and manage that for you. So you'll see more um, as time goes on as we evolve um, this service, but some big new updates for that. The other area we're seeing compute evolution is actually in the idea of complex event processing and shrinking the, really the compute profile and how you launch and manage compute. So to that end, we actually launched Lambda um, last year, which is really about shrinking compute to the atomic scale. Um, so it really is driven on a, uh, you get events from AWS services, that generates automatic execution, no servers to, to publish to. So as a, as a, let's say for example, as a file is dropped into S3, uh, Lambda will invoke uh, your own code as a Node.js uh, uh, um, script, which will then do some analysis of that file or maybe even perform some functions on top of it. And so we will uh, orchestrate that entire process automatically. Um, so, obviously, there's lots of use cases for this. Um, data triggers, as I mentioned, files are dropping in S3, changes occurring in DynamoDB, um, Internet of Things applications, small devices, trickling information into the platform and then invoking uh, changes based on that. Um, stream processing, uh, it integrates with Kinesis for processing streams of data. Uh, of course, indexing and synchronizing uh, as changes occur within the environment, updating search indexes and synchronizing data through a fleet of servers. And the entire thing is about a server-free backend. So as uh, events occur, this uh, Lambda invokes the script, and then there's no EC2 instances necessary to launch to run that. We run that on your behalf and invoke it for you. Um, so there's some new features we launched very, very recently for this. Um, you can call those functions directly and invoke um, Lambda uh, directly. Uh, we've got some mobile SDK support, integration with the mobile platform, and now you can write those functions in Java as well in addition to Node.js. 
But let's take a step back and think about moving to the cloud. Many of you might be newer to the platform um, or not using it at all, in which case you might be thinking about, is it a binary decision? Do I have to go all in, or can I actually have a hybrid model? And so what role does this hybrid IT play? Well, what we've done to support that transitional model is really to focus on building capabilities and services that allow you to integrate your on-premises infrastructure with AWS today. So for example, you might have uh, you know, integrated networking. You want to bridge the gap between your on-premises data center and AWS. You can use Direct Connect or the virtual private cloud offering to build a seamless network that connects your on-premises infrastructure and the AWS platform. The same thing is true with integrated identity. You can integrate your, your directory services or uh, identity stores with the AWS platform through our simple uh, directory service. Um, again, it continues on with man integrated management. We have plugins for, for common virtualization management solutions such as vCenter or System Center. Um, and of course, our services give you detailed analysis of what uh, APIs were called, so you can integrate those with your own management infrastructure. So it really is about not uh, a, a all or one, but really a, a transition across the, uh, from the on-premises to AWS. But again, hybrid IT is not the destination, but it is required as part of that journey as you move to an all-cloud focus. So customers or partners, uh, we're seeing more and more of this as well, which is the eighth example, really. Customers and partners are becoming all in. So in 2009, when Netflix said, we're moving our entire infrastructure to AWS, that was a bold move. Many folks talked about that. There was a lot of press around it, a lot of discussion around why that made sense for them. But that's not really uh, the case anymore. It's not a bold move. Uh, in 2004, Charles Phillips, the CEO of Infor, uh, put a famous quote on stage. Um, said, friends don't let friends build data centers. Um, certainly a very popular quote with us, uh, and obviously it's a, it's a trend we're seeing more and more folks uh, buy into. So now all in with AWS is not just about one or two players, but really a, a large number of both enterprise customers as well as ISVs. So you see Netflix, but then you know, Suncorp Group, a financial services company, Intuit, um, you know, on the ISV space, Infor obviously, Splunk, MicroStrategy, TIBCO, uh, partners and customers are considering AWS as the sole platform for their entire infrastructure, um, both internal applications as well as their services they deliver to their customers as well. So I'd like to close with some final thoughts about Amazon. Um, I've been lucky enough to be at Amazon for nine and a half years, uh, and I've had a, the joy of learning and, and working with many uh, customers around the world. And I think there's three things that I would leave with you about how to think about Amazon as a partner. Uh, and who to work with. Um, and the first is really our focus on customer obsession. I didn't write this, by the way. I, I couldn't figure out how to put this into Korean. Someone else did this for me. Um, but the first focus is really customer obsession. 90% or more, more, more than 90% of our roadmap and our platform comes from customer feedback. So we work with customers out in the field, folks like myself, sales, professional services. We work with you directly to understand what it is you need to be effective how we can deliver services that are gonna make your business move faster. Um, and that's the start point. When we start to build a new service, we start from the customer. We say, who will, who, what will they get out of this? What will be the end result of launching this new capability? And then we work backwards on how we build that out and how we scale that over time. Um, the second thing to remember about Amazon is that we're a company of inventors. Um, we're builders. Uh, we're focused on continuing to evolve and innovate. As you've seen from many of our slides about innovation, that is our core focus. We will continue to build new services and new capabilities, and that is a core of uh, us as a company. We often say that it's really just day one um, for us. We're gonna continue to evolve, and that's consistent not just in the AWS business, but also in the retail business, seller business, our digital platforms. We, we really continue to believe that if we're stopping, we're, we're, st we're blocking innovation. We need to continue to evolve that platform. And the final thing I'll leave you with is our focus on long-term orientation. Um, we've been in this business for nine years, but we see this as a continuing trend. It's an evolution in IT, and we see, our focus is how to make that evolution in IT continue, not just in the short term, but in the long term, and how do we build a relationship with you that will benefit us and will keep you coming back. For example, we've lowered our prices well over 40 times. Um, we do that because we think it benefits you. It benefits you, you then come back to us for more um, capabilities and more needs because you can consume more. You have more budget to work with. That benefits you and it benefits us. It allows us to lower costs overall. 
Um, it really is a long-term focus uh, of our business, and we want to build a long-term partnership with you. Come, Sammy, down.